Hi guys, I'm Michael Force here from the install shop at Force State Trucks. Uh, today we're going to kind of show you these steps and the procedures we use to mount, in this case, half fenders on a truck. Uh, one of the biggest questions everybody gets is uh, how do they mount, how high they need to go. So I'm going to kind of show you the uh, things you need to check, measure, uh, adjustments we need to make onto suspension travel, and fifth wheel height, and where the fenders will mount onto the truck at. We're using the hook belt half fenders in this case. Same uh, same procedure pretty much applies in full fenders, uh, single axle fenders, etc. All right. So the first thing we need to do is make sure that our truck has a full supply of air and is sitting at our normal ride height. I'm gonna check our fifth wheel height with, and we're at even 46 inches. Our suspension travel, which we've got three and a half inches in there. So as this truck travels you know down the road and bouncing around and everything this fifth wheel height in relation to the tires will be up to three and a half inches lower than this our tire height is 40 and about a quarter of an inch so if we do our math here we'll get uh, our height of 46 inches travel of three and a half inches means it could be as low as 42 and a half that only leaves two and a quarter inches from the tire to the fifth wheel. But I could dump the air here and show you how close that actually is. Looks like it's hit a stopping point there. I think we're like two and a quarter of an inch across the top of that. But our, our goal here is to have five inches from the top of the tire to the top of the fifth wheel, allowing one inch of travel of room from the tires to the bottom of the fender with the suspension taken all the way out and four inches from the top of the fender to the top of the fifth wheel. That allows for the truck to make a, over changes in the road and, and bouncing on the airbags and everything. If uh, this clearance is too tight, your tire is either going to rub the bottom of the fender, damage to your tire, damage to your fenders. Or if your fenders are too high compared to the fifth wheel, your fenders and brackets will get broken from the trailer getting into them as it's changing its pitch and, and going over raises and dips and bumps and everything in the road. It uh, happens all the time, so that's why we shoot for a four inch. I kind of consider that our, our safe amount of clearance there. In this case, since we are so low, there's two things we're going to be doing to add this clearance. In this suspension travel here, we already had our three and a half inches. We need to keep a minimum of two inches of travel so this thing is not bottoming out every time it hits a bump in the road. So since we had three and a half, I'm going to take an inch and a half of travel out of there by bolting in a piece of tube like this. This is inch and a half thick walled steel tubing. And when this truck is back up, this will be bolted to the bottom side of here so that we'll effectively have two inches of travel. That still doesn't get us all the room that we need. So we're also going to be changing these risers from this seven inch riser leg to an eight inch riser leg. That'll be in, giving us about two and a half more inches of room total. So we should have four and three quarters of an inch between the uh, top of the tire and top of the fifth wheel. And that's pretty close to our safe room. So that's what we're gonna be working with here. So we just got the top plate of the fifth wheel removed and here are the riser legs that we'll be removing on this truck or replacing on this truck. These are uh, the new style Holland. These are the most simple ones to change. If you have something like a, a Jost or a um, Fontaine, you may not even be able to change this on them, but uh, you definitely can on here. All right, so it's one at a time. I'll take off these old risers. Here's our new eight inch riser. These new risers do come with the new plates in the bottom that secure it to the air cylinder section. I'm changing these need to make sure that the these will sit on here either way, but this right here is a stop so that when the top plate tilts back, it'll rest on here and not tip down and to get caught in his teeth or on the on the frame or anything. And install our new bushings. Install the new bushings on this side. Now one of the pieces needs to go on here before we put our top plate back on. 
these are the half round blocks round to match the top of here the cutout in the fifth wheel is square or more square but that will sit on it that way it will roll over the top there and pivot like it needs to but first you need to put some grease on here and grease the top of these i'm going to do some on the side of the bushing too just to help eliminate some of the friction there and that block will sit on top of there and these a lot of times will stick into the bottom of the top plate so which is fine if they stay there if you're using reusing your top plate just need to make sure that whatever's there is on here and you don't have a square notch sitting on top of this round pillow block So before we mount the fenders, we'll take care of all our other adjustments that we're making. Like we just changed our risers on the fifth wheel. And next I'll be adding the blocks into the stops into the suspension travel. We definitely do all these things before we mount our fenders. Um, that way all the variables are taken out of the equation beforehand. Plus it's a whole lot easier to work in this area without a fender here, especially if you don't want to scratch it or get it dirty or scarred up. Next thing I'm going to do is add the stop into the suspension here and to do that I'll have a hole drilled here and here and then also in the tubing that I'm going to put in there I'm going to go ahead and cut off the excess off these hucks just to make it easier for my drill to get in there and I'll do that with an electric grinder to cut off that excess. This is a, basically a crimped collar shaft here. Anything outside of here is no problem. I don't want to cut anywhere from this edge of the collar towards the frame unless I'm going to entirely remove that part which is not necessary in this case. So this is the type of stop that we'll be using on this low air leaf, which is also the same as the Kenworth AG400L um, to limit the travel. If you have a different type of suspension on a different truck, like a Flex Air, uh, Kenworth Air Glide 200 or 400, Freightliner Airliner, Volvo, other types of systems, they will take a different type of bracket to limit the travel, but this is what we'll be using on a low air leaf. So I'm gonna use this little template we have to set on top of this existing stop, and that'll mark where I'm gonna drill my holes at. Now a second hole. All right, so I'm gonna take my homemade jig here that I used to drill the holes in the factory blocks on a frame. I'm gonna use those to lay out the holes in my tubing that I cut off our rack out here. Mark those two holes. If we were to do full fenders or four individual fenders, we will need to put these tops on top of those axles also. Reason being is if you were to do them just under one axle, like say for the rear, if we're on flat ground, we can dump the air and this axle will stop traveling only on flat ground though. But as it's going over the changes in the road, it can still move so we'll put a stop under the front axle so it's going to stop and not get in the fender the rear axle is not going to have a fender to worry about so we're going to leave it to where it can still travel its full full width all right now i've got a painted stop here i just the hole and i'll tighten these up So now I've got our stops bolted in here. You can see we went from having three and a half inches of room in here to now having just two inches. And that's what we need. We go ahead and lower the suspension to make sure we have our height we need from the tire to the fifth wheel now. I'm gonna level up this fifth wheel, this top plate. I'm gonna put this piece of tubing on top of the tire to simulate the top of the fender plus our one inch gap. And where we're sitting on, it's like about exactly four inches there. So we're right where we wanna be. So now we've got our stops in there. We've got our suspension frame lowered down on the stops on the axle. I'm gonna use this jig we have here with uh, some one inch tubes on it to give us our one inch spacer. We'll set our first half fender on here to get an idea where the brackets will be. As you can see, it's way off. I'll just raise this until we're level with the frame. I'm just using my eyeball there for the time being. Our fender's level with the frame. 
And right now I've got this sitting in line with where we took our quarter fender off. And if we were to use a standard post mount bracket on here, we could go right there, trace out our pattern, drill it. But as you can see, we have a huge gap. So our goal is to move this fender closer to the tire, roughly get the wheel and tire in center of this opening here. And in this case, we'll be using the suspension mount brackets. They'll bolt onto the uh, three existing holes in the suspension mount to the frame, and it'll position it right there where we want to be. All right, this post has one bolt in the center of it going through the frame. I'll get my socket in there. I've obviously got a hole in the frame now that I need to put a bolt back into. Uh, once again, we're, everything we're dealing with is suspension specific. Uh, so what we've got here are mounts from Hogbuilt that'll go over their suspension mount on these three locations right there. And I think they even have different brackets for tall 24.5s. These brackets here are for low pro 24.5s or 22.5s. And this bracket will simply go in place like that right there. And that'll position our fender right there close to the tire where we want. So what I'll be doing is cut off this top huck and removing these two bolts. With these three in here, this isn't gonna go anywhere. So you can see we've got four spacers here that came with this bracket. And we'll be using two of them, but which two we use will depend on the year. According to instructions here, 2005 through 2016, use the two shorter ones that will go here and here. And the 2017 and newer will use the two longer ones, which are different length because where they mount on the suspension mount has got a different thickness of it. So it'll be like this right here. Our spacers will go there and there. And there's a welded spacer on the top one that brings us out to a flat level for the bracket. All right. Putting some five inch bolts on the bottom. And a four inch long bolt in the top. The bottom will go through the cross so it takes more, more bolt to get through it. The top one's going only through the frame rail and the bracket. So now we've got our bracket on here. It's positioned in its place over the suspension mount. You can see it's about four inches or so from the weight of the tire, much better than the eight inches that we had with that post. And I got our one inch spacer on top of the tire still, so I'll reposition the fender on here and lay out these holes. So I got my fender sitting back on here, pulled up against the bracket where it'll sit. And for the sake of being precise, I'll make the height of the angle of this fender match the angle of the frame. And I'll just do that with a level. Looks like I'm right on the back line of that one. And I'll just adjust this until it matches. All right, so what I'm doing now is just kind of checking the gap from the tire to the edges of the fender here to make, it, make sure the tire stays pretty well centered in the fender. I'll check what that is off the frame. So I'm 31 and about three quarters. I'll check that back here at the back to make sure we're straight. And once again up front, just see if anything moved. We're still good there. And now with this plastic still on the fender, it's a good place just to take your Sharpie and draw a perimeter border on that bracket and that'll be what I use to set my template up on there to lay out my bolt holes just make sure your marker stays the same angle to them if you get this way my line will be a half inch off by the time it gets underneath there and before I remove this fender from here to drill the holes this is the rear bracket they'll be using on this this is a hog built center support bracket or a rear bracket for a half fender so we'll use this bracket to find us a point on the frame that we're going to use. You could use an existing hole or possibly have to drill a new one. If I went up here to the fifth wheel angle, it looks like I'm going to be too high. And I haven't even got it on there yet. And this top plate will bolt to the top of there so I can adjust. It's about eight inches of height there. 
I don't like how that one sits, so I'm gonna be drilling a new hole. I'll go down here right below that fifth wheel angle, as far to the rear as I can go. I'll position it here on that tape. Take my marker once again and trace it out. And actually remove it, take some measurements and draw the point on there. I need where I'm going to be. So here's my border I drew for my rear bracket. Now I can take my measurements off of here to where to put this hole at. Looks like I'm about one and seven sixteenths from the top and the same from either side. And I'll drill that five eighths hole for the bolt on this mount. So before I put the fender on, I'm gonna go ahead and get my rear mount put on. Just run a bolt into the, well, the nut inside of it. Leave that a little bit loose so I can still adjust it forward to backward as needed. And I've got about an inch or so to the clearance to the tire, so I won't have any problem with that. I've got the border of where my bracket was drawn out on this fender, but I don't have exact locations of my bolt holes. So that's where we need to have a template made for this. Using this paper on top of this bracket here, I can find all the, the holes. Now I've got a template of my bracket. I can lay this on my fender and mark right through those holes. What I have here is one I've made in the past out of aluminum. Matches my fender bracket perfectly. And I use it a lot, so I'll use a more permanent structure. As you can see, the mark I made for the border is much larger than what my, the bracket is or what my template is. So I'll just center this on the top lines and bottom lines. Just use my eyes just visually there. Center. Draw my six holes. And I'll drill these larger than the 5 16 bolts that go in there. I'll probably drill this to a 3 8 or possibly even 7 16 That'll give me a little bit of room to shift this fender as needed to, to make it straight with the, with the truck. These might be off by a sixteenth of an inch somewhere, so having an oversized hole makes it much easier to work with. Something to remember when drilling the stainless fender, or any stainless for that matter, is to do it in short pulses like that. If you do a constant high speed, a lot of pressure on there, it'll burn your drill bit up. It'll get red and glowing, and you won't get anywhere with the hole. So short burst make your drill bit last longer and you'll get a better hole. Now I'll go up a size, drill it a little bit larger. So I've already got my holes drilled in the fender. Like I said, I pulled the plastic away from it to allow me to still get the bracket on here, but still protect the fender over the rest of it. So let me go ahead and put it into place. Now the rear is just gonna sit back here on the tire for the time being until I get the front mounted on loosely. We use our stainless bolt and our straps. There's three of these straps and two bolt or six bolts on each set of holes. Right. So now I've got all six bolts in loosely. Having those holes oversized helps tremendously to get those all lined up. Now I'm going to get the rear into position, get it set at the height that I was that we were aiming for earlier. Now I'm using this plate here that's going to attach to this tube that I just put on and I'm going to have to mark my holes into this part and drill them and this surface is going to mount to the bottom of the fender itself and that's going to let me adjust the height that I need and possibly any angle to make it level also. So I'm going to use this pair of long arm device grips to clamp this to that tube so I can lay out my holes. Once again I'm going to check my levelness with the frame Obviously where I just clamped it on here, I'm running downhill by quite a bit. 
So I'm gonna adjust this higher. I'm gonna use this bar of steel to help hold the fender up to the level I need. Then I can clamp my bracket in place. It's like that's where I was going for. Let that hold it while I adjust this. Now I've got my fender set where I wanted. My bar clamped onto the back. Let me check for level left and right. Obviously I need to adjust this a little bit. All right, so I've got my bracket mounted to the back of the tube on the frame. Now I'm just gonna mark the bolt holes from the bracket to this tube and also mark the holes from the bracket onto the bottom of the fender. There's two holes at each end. Now I'll take the fender off of the truck and set it on my stand and drill my four holes in the fender that I marked. Again, I'm drilling these holes larger than the bolts that'll be in them. It makes mounting a whole lot easier. So I'm gonna bolt my bracket onto my tube through the holes I drilled here. Set the fender back on. Let me go ahead and tighten these four bolts up. And now I can tighten up the bolts to the tube to the bracket. Then I come back one more time, just check my level. Let's get that way. Looks like I need to raise the inside up a little bit. I'll tighten these six bolts up under here. Let me check our fifth wheel clearance again. The fender finally mounted. We are sitting at about four and a half inches on the on that one. So we've got got plenty of room there. We feel safe with the trailer. Won't have any issues with this. Let me go ahead and raise the suspension back up so we can see how our fender looks over the wheel. Yeah, that's really nice. We got more room in the front than on top, but that's all right. We're kind of limited on what we can get away with with that bracket, but that is a lot closer to it than it was with that quarter fender mount location. We've got uh, ample room from the fender to the fifth wheel. We know we have enough room from the tire to the bottom of the fender. And we've got solid brackets on the front and the back. All in all, it's a good sturdy setup. Won't give you any trouble. Uh, we're just gonna repeat this process for the driver's side and we'll be good to go.